<laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this evening. Nancy can't join us tonight, so you just have Lisa and I. So I am Joanne with For Better, For Worse. And Lisa Batasco with Canine Defined. All right. So looking for some people to kind of start joining us. Tell us you're out there. Say hello. Um, we wanted to kind of talk about a topic tonight that I, I feel like has a lot of stigma around it. Um, can have some some bad feelings, things like that, which is when, when do you feel like you've got to a point, um, where, where sometimes maybe you've tried everything you can try and, and progress, you don't seem to be making more progress. Like you've got to a point and you hit a wall, right? Or even on top of that, um, something that somebody else says is important is not important to you, right? So kind of trying to hit two of those topics tonight. And how do we, how do we work on behaviors uh, or, or accept behaviors as they are? Um, so, so where do we get to those points and what are they? At least I know this was dear to you as well. So yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I guess, you know, it, it all depends on what is, and I, I think like a lot of times, like people who come to trainers needing to resolve certain issues or work on certain issues, like it's sometimes you just have to manage and accept who they are. And if they're going to do what they do, it's like, how important is it? And how hard do you want to work? Like it's kind of relative either way. Right. And, um, you know, and I know we were talking before we got on, but like, and I didn't say this, but for example, like my Papillon, who's a year old, he's a little weird with people right now. And so I'm hoping that's not a huge issue. However, um, when I got him, he was okay. He was interested in people and stuff like that. And then, and then he went through a, he had Giardia. And so then he had um, lots of handling issues because he had to be overhandled when he wasn't feeling well. And I don't know about you, but I am not a happy camper when that happens. Like, don't touch me, leave me alone. And I get that. And so now he's a year old and I took him to the vet the other day and he was not exhibiting desirable behavior. Right. And so I have to, I have to realize like, okay, it's, it's okay if you don't like, or you're not okay in that situation and love everybody, but you still have to be okay overall, if that makes sense. Right. And then in his own environment where he feels safe and confident, he's fine with approaching people outside where there's more space where he can check them out and move out about his own. But yet in a more confined space, it becomes more of a concern. So like, you know, I have to say, okay, did I do something wrong? Did I pay the right, the right or wrong personality for me? Am I okay with it? You know, you have to ask yourself and we're our own worst cr critics, right? Like we are our own worst critics. Like what did I do right or wrong? Like those are real things. And I don't know about you, Joanne, but I do hear a lot of people like, what did I do wrong? I'm like, yeah. you, you did not do anything wrong. Like you have to come to terms with accepting who they are and working with what's in front of you. Right. Yeah. I actually said it to Lisa. We were chatting before we went live and I said, you know, Bam for me. I, I I struggle with the dog a lot. I mean, and a lot of people don't see it because, you know, when we're at trials or we're out and about, he's a nice dog. He's not a bad dog. But some of the, the genetics and the way he's built and the way his brain works makes it really, really tough. Number one, for him to hold it together. And I don't mean aggressively, just for him to hold his four feet on the ground and, you know, normal thoughts in his brain without going over the deep end. Um, and, and it, it's like, I, I do this for a living. Like what, why can I not push us past the point mm -hmm. of, of fixing this? And it's not broken, but like helping to make it better and better and better. And like, why am I stuck here? Why do I feel like I can't progress anymore? What am I doing wrong? What am I not trying? And, uh, 
I think, you know, like Lisa said, right, a lot of clients are the same thing. Like, let's say you have a reactive dog, you know, and, and you've tried and you've done everything and you've gone to the classes and, and it's a little bit better and you've made progress and maybe you've made a lot of progress and it's still, you, you still, right? The dog will still lunge sometimes and the dog will still do this sometimes. And you're like, God, what can I do to just stop this stuff from happening? And in the end, some of it is the dog is who they are. They're, they're depending on why they're reactive, right? Sometimes there's deep seated mental things that aren't ours, right? Maybe there was an accident, maybe not, maybe they came that way. Um, but you know, in the end, those sorts of things we can help and assist, but it, you know, it's, it's like, I think, I think about it sometimes like this, right? Like I have, I have an autoimmune condition, right? And I really like food. I like sugar. I like things that taste really good. <laughs> and most of the things that taste really good are really bad for me, for, for any of us, right? But sugar, sugar is inflammatory. And so I can look at it and somebody made homemade pie. And I'm like, is it worth it for me to feel like crap <laughs> for like five to 10 days? And sometimes I go, yeah, it's a really bad decision, but you know, grandma's pie and, and I know it's going to be bad. And, and I think dogs struggle with some of that too, right? Like no matter what we do and no matter what they know is correct, they're like, eh, I'm going to do it. It's not, I know it's a bad decision, but I'm going to do it anyway. So. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I, I'm like, it's not right or wrong. It's just where you are in your time of life. Right. Like everything <laughs> What I, I would make much more, I don't know, challenging, or I was more um, uh, crazy when I was younger. Like Nancy and I were talking today and I was like, well, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I remember when we ran day school and we had the Dobermans, we had the shepherds and stuff like that. And we were like, I'm going to get you stop, you know, and stuff like that. Now I'm like, I can't get there. (laughs) Like, it's not the same, right? (laughs) Because you're like, crap, my knee hurts. I'm trying to get there. And it's it's just different, right? And so we all pick things that are relative to us. And like if you wanted specific personalities or specific temperaments for what you're doing, you have to really be more selective about it, right? Mm-hmm. Ultimate when you come to it. And sometimes like life happens and you accept what you accept. Like, so I have uh, my cattle dog and stuff like that. And she's, you know, uh, allegedly she's a purebred. I haven't done the um, embark test on her and stuff like that, but she is very cattle doggy. Right. And I used to think I wanted one until I got one and I'm like, that's a lot. Right. And so, (laughs) and I'm like, I love you, but wow, my life would be much different, Mm. you know? And, And those are things that you have to consider. Right. We don't consider that. I think a lot of times we live in the stigma, like it's kind of the old school of like um, they're clean slates until we put what put things into them. And like the older I get, I'm like, uh, no, that's yeah. no, pick better. Like, right. And we were talking like um, to me, I'm like, my dogs can all be out together. There's little tiffs here and there, but that's it it breaks up easy. But at the same time, like I value the fact that I'm able to do that now. Whereas years before I had tricky dogs and I couldn't do that, you know? So don't you think though, two years before it's like what, what every decade we get smarter and we get to be better trainers because like in my twenties, I was like, stop that. Don't do that. And you have to manage like every little whisker. Right. Right. And now you're like, knock it off seriously and and they're like and you're like hey stop and they're like oh okay where before we'd get up and we'd rush in and we'd oh we got to break it up and and you know tiffs like that right you you sort of realize behavior it'd be the same thing as i was like lisa i don't agree with you i don't think that's right and this is why and you're like well this is why i think that and i'm like i don't like that i don't like that at all right and so we're just having a little verbal not even an altercation, right? But a discussion. discussion. Yeah. And because dogs growl and show teeth with a discussion, I think, you know, we overreact as humans, but so I, I don't know. Uh, 
it's it, it like as we get older i'll tell you i'm like as i get older i'm like i just don't want any more complications in my yep. life <laughs> life is so much more challenging like as i get older my tolerance level drops right and you know i'm 50 and i'm like oh shit, i'm 50 but <laughs> but like i'm like i don't want troublesome sh- stuff in my home like i don't i want peace harmony there could be a little discussions here and there but at the most part like i just want to like sit back and watch the conversations my dog has my dogs have and i really enjoy that right and so previously i've had dogs who didn't get along with other dogs it was a separated community and um and then i had a dog who didn't get along with people and then i had a dog who wanted to kill my other dog and i had a dog who was not okay with my husband and yeah um and and like now it's like i just want peace and quiet and to laugh at my dogs and enjoy that it's heartwarming to watch them engage each other so trying to find the right fit is critical to me versus oh i I love that looking dog and stuff like that there was a dog in the rescue i saw and she was a little sheppy uh shepherd labrador mix so and i'm like if you were a male i'd consider you however (laughs) you really can't have another female the females are tough right and i just don't want that energy Like, but she was wonderful. And then I got a little possessive, like who adopted her and what happened? And, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are dogs that I enjoy and I'm like, oh, what happened with that dog? So, you know, but at the same time, it's like you have to pick for your home, right? And what you're willing to work with. Um, And I think I was talking, well, I I was talking the other day. the other day I met a, um, I had a couple that came and was saying there was a, there was a dog, it was a bully breed and I knew him as a puppy. He wasn't super like sociable with people, but he was into his people and he was, he liked who he liked, right? Like if you made it into a circle, he was fine, whatever. Well, that being the case, you could anticipate certain behaviors occurring at home people entering the home and stuff like that. Well, well, he's like four now or something. And he ended up, sorry, my dogs are playing. Um, he ended up um, getting more sassy when people come in the house. And so I'm like, don't let him rehearse that. And so he remembered me. So we came down, I said, put him away and people came. That's management and prevention of rehearsal, right? And then when he came down, they had him on a leash, but the the, the husband slash boyfriend, whatever, was making him be more thoughtful coming down the stairs and said, and I'm like, that's exactly what you want. He needs to be more whatever, but he's not Mr. Social Butterfly, whereas the other dog is. I'm like, it's okay that you get to manage that, right? Mm. It's okay that you get to manage and say, this is not who he is. He doesn't enjoy it. That's okay, right? And if she enjoys it, that's fine. Let her, you don't have to have the same rules for each dog. Every dog is different, right? So it was interesting. And they felt almost relieved in the fact that they didn't have to like let him be out. I'm like, it's okay. They're like, it's okay to crate him. I'm like, it's fine. It's probably more comfortable for him not to have that interactions right because it becomes too stressful and then he gets over aroused and he gets more sassy and i'm like don't rehearse it it's not it's not who he is and guess what that's okay Mm -hmm. like i'm not you know i'm a homebody i mean like i am i just am and anybody who knows me and stuff like that and they see me out and about and like if i could be home 24 7 like that's me i'm okay with that right and it's not that i don't enjoy people but my social battery is different versus others, right? Like Nancy is super like, I love people, I wanna deal with them, this and this and that and whatever. But like, I'm like, yeah, okay, good, good for you. Nice choice, I'm doing my thing, I gotta go, right? And I don't mind helping, don't get me wrong, that's not the case, but at the same time, it's like, I have so much before I rejuvenate my own self and that's okay, like, it is what it is, right? We don't get dogs for, others we get dogs for ourselves yep for sure so well and and i don't know how many people out there either you know i i I know lisa and i both are big rescue supporters and have been you know our whole lives since we were young and um 
But we also got to the point too, where we're like, I would like a puppy, a well-bred puppy that I can do some things with. Right. So we researched our breeders and so whether or not we're talking about a rescue dog or, or a breeder dog, right. I'm going to use the breeder world because for this story, it makes a little more sense. Um, but when I got Bam, I, you know, I lost all my dogs and I was, I really wanted another Doberman in the house. And, um, the, the dog that I lost was from a certain male who I am in love with. I've loved that dog since he was four months old and I first met him and she, uh, his owner, you know, breeder is a, is a friend of mine. So she bred him to another female lived in Chicago. And when you talk you know, show dog pedigrees, it was to die for. I mean, cream of the crop, they both won nationals, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I'm not going to special a dog, but, um, you know, she's a co-owner and she was like, I think this is going to be a really good breeding. So anyway, are you interested? Yes. Um, and so I went and first thing was the day that she whelped the puppies, she fell and broke her foot. So she was now relying because she couldn't go, she couldn't do anything with the dogs, right? She was laid up. So she's relying on other people to kind of come in and care for the puppies and help to, to do all the things that puppies need. Um, and, and, and so they didn't get outside much until they were a little older and, you know, she was able to move around in her cast and here nor there, they were, they're well-rounded puppies. They're, they're good with environments. You know, that didn't seem to be an issue, but when I went to meet them when they were five weeks old, there's that whole like, oh my gosh, what a, what a great breeding. And I'm so excited to get a puppy. Right. And I also didn't know this breeder. She did. They weren't like best friends, but I mean, they had known each other for a long time. And I felt a little weird, like, Hey, can I take the puppy away and do an assessment? <laughs> you know, when we come back, cause it was, it was weird. I just didn't know her that well. And I, I also didn't want to impose on my breeder you know, like, do you mind if I do this? And I should have, I really should have, cause she wouldn't have cared. Um, so I never assessed him. I, I spent a lot of time with him in the group of puppies. Right. And what I thought I saw was true in the group of puppies. That's exactly what I saw. But when I took him away, I was like, Oh, missed a lot of things. Um, that, that and that's why you've heard us say when you assess dogs, right. You really need to see them by themselves to truly know who they are. So anyway, bring this guy home. And he was actually a lovely, busy, busy puppy till, you know, and he got along and, and he and my Vishla Noah, they were, they were really good friends for a while. And, you know, he, he kind of hit sexual maturity around 17 months old. And they all of a sudden were like, I don't like you anymore. Hmm. Like, uh Oh, you know, and you can start to see things happen. And so I had started, they had gotten into, you know, some verbal blah, blah, blah stuff. And so I was like, yeah, I don't like this. This is becoming more frequent. So I started to separate them. And I, I mean, I just watched them now. They would fight. They haven't fought, but they would, they would 100% get in a fight with each other. Um, so that, that's one of those things. Now that's the dog I have. I'm not returning him. You know, he was 18 months old. I've already done a ton of stuff with him. So I'm going to manage that situation. I live in a house of Fort Knox, right? I got gates all over. I have X pens. I have, you know, you're in here, you're in here. We rotate when we go potty. Once you do that, it sounds crazy, but once you live that life, it's just normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. that way, it's not a big deal for me, right? Now, if I had a house of kids and people were, you know, coming in the door and this and that, right? That's a nightmare. Somebody's leaving a gate open, those types of things, but not an issue for me. So, um, you know, the, the more I get to know this dog and Lisa, you've met him a couple of times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and you guys, you've heard me talk about this for years, guys, is, is leash training this dog. Right. And I, I teach classes. I teach hundreds and thousands of dogs. I've, I've done rescue. I've had many dogs in my lifetime. Right. I know how to leash train a dog. I know multiple ways to leash train a dog. And I'm like, what? He, he, he is not right. If, if I have a cookie and it's in his face, in my hand and I'm making eye contact and I'm talking to him, basically like how you start in beginning obedience, right? He's okay. Looks yeah. like a good heel, little heel position, right? He's paying attention. He's into it. The moment I disengage, even if it's like, oh, let me get another cookie. 
he's gone, gone. And, and it's like, what, what can I do here? Like, what am I missing? What can I do to keep his attention? And I remember having a conversation with Lisa and she's like, it's not you. Stop blaming yourself. It's not you. And I, but you, you feel sometimes when you've had a lot of dogs or God forbid you are a dog trainer that can't train a dog. Right. <laughs> what, what is happening here? What am I missing? Um, so, you know, I went through the gamut. I, I did a harness. I, he, and that worked for a while until it didn't. And then I got a head halter and it worked for a while until it didn't. And, you know, for a brief two week period, I even put a pinch collar on the dog. You know, it's not my go-to. It's really not. It's never, it's not even my second or third, but I, I put one on him. He broke it. He's like, yeah, this doesn't hurt that much. Busted the pinch collar. So I went back to the harness. It was the thing that seemed to work the best, right? And it's also a safety concern because that dog can drag me down if he wants to. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know if you're all right with it. I'd like to share a video with you guys. Is that okay? Let me go here. Um, I'm going to find out where my stuff is at. Hold on. All right. Um, share screen. All right. So the dog is Stop. three years old. It's 2021. I have a mask on, so clearly it's COVID, right? So this right. is 2021. He was born in February of 2018. So this is, he's three years old at this point. Um, can you guys see my screen loading? Yep. Okay. So oh, you're working on halt hand says. Yep. All right. So this is literally nothing is there's nobody in the building. This is just me and the dog. Oh my gosh. This is going at like 900 times the speed. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Such is life. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. So you can see with nothing happening. He hates the haughty. He's having trouble paying attention. He's out in front of me. Right. I'm talking to him with cookies in my hands. And he can do it sort of for three steps. Right. But this dog is three years old. He's had leash training from the day I brought him home. Right. So, you know, no one in the building, just me and him, bigger space. Does a decent job, but he even here, he's struggling to stay with me. He's struggling to hold it together. But he is a, like, overall, he's more aroused dog. Right? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay. So I even moved to a smaller space. It looks better in a smaller space. But even so he's here. He's still on a halty, right? Yep. This is a different yes. one. Yep. Oh, oh. yes. Yeah, still on a halty. So I don't know why this is going so fast. Hang on. Yeah, it 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 totally space I think makes a difference for dogs, right? Sure. Find, and especially with dogs that are um oh but super aroused and aware of his surroundings, right? Everything's exciting. I mean, look at his body language, even yeah. his eyes, right? And this is, I think, where a lot of people miss it. Like, this is not, this is not um, drive. This is arousal, right? When you get into some of this stuff. It's not that he can't work, but he still had a hard time. He was very, right. he seemed like he's pretty uh, environmental, right? No, Overall. he's not actually. Loud noises are like one of the only things. And he doesn't run, but he'll go back and kind of watch and say, what is that? But otherwise, and surfaces. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But yeah. he's, I think he's a little more auditory. Ah, okay. Well, when a smaller room, there's more sound, right? Yes, yes. So those are things like when we look at stuff, I don't know, and, and Joanne, I know we're all the same about that. It's like, why is the dog behaving this way? It, what does it have to do with? And right. that's kind of the integrative part of it, right? Yep. What is, does it have to do with the environment? Is there, if there's less or more um, root or walls and stuff, there's different sound. If the dog is, you know, very auditory, it could potentially be a concern for them to have, be able to split attention, 
right? So, yeah. Interesting. So, you know, it's funny that I, I mean, you've seen my, I mean, people who have been around, not everybody here, but some of the people that watch, you've seen my other dogs, right? They all occasionally go out to the end of the leash and will pull you and you remind them, hey, you remember this? No, oh, sorry, right? And they kind of come back. That dog, I mean, and that was in my training building that he's at multiple times a week. You know what I mean? And, and nothing else. We're not even in a room with anybody else. And so I think those are the moments where I'm like, this is more than just me. Right. right? And so when we talk about managing stuff, I, I think I just want to let and I'm not talking about, yeah, I tried to class for six weeks, right? This is three years in the making. Right. I've tried every which way from Sunday. I want to let some people off the hook, right? About if you have a dog trainer who's like, you're not trying hard enough and you're not doing the homework and you're not doing this, right? When you have put in every ounce of what you have and, and you reach that brick wall and you're like, listen, we got better and this is where we're at and we cannot seem to push past it. Yep. Sure, maybe explore a different option. Maybe see if somebody else has something for you. But sometimes you have to settle in and say, I, I really have, this is not me. Like the dog is operating in this scenario. That dog is operating to the best of the capacity they have in their brain. Yeah. And I guess, and, and I agree with you. I think a lot of times like we end up and we are harder on ourselves than the average person, right? As mm -hmm. trainers, it's like, what am I doing? Why am I, why is this not occurring the way it should? We should be much further. I mean, you know, and um, I'll tell you, like I did videos in, in 2020 when, when everything hit, I did videos and each of my dogs are different. Like, some of my dogs could do collar and leash handling without a problem and walking on a leash. I had other dogs that were uh, my cattle dog who is super like, she's like, we're working. And she, her head was like, we're working and on top of it. Right. And I'm like, that's great, but that's not real life either. This is right. not. And so you have to balance it. Right. And so, and as much as I like that at the same time, I'm like, in the real, in the grand scheme of life, you are not in working mode right? You are, if I want to take you to different places and learn, have you hang out, your motions are much more smoother versus very like, oh, we're working. Like, I don't want that. Like the anticipation and so forth is it, to me is indicative of arousal of arousal. And then the arousal is not helping you live a life. But anyway, so, and then I had a shepherd and my shepherd was, you know, they're rear wheel drive, right? They're just, that's who they are. And so we worked on walking on a leash and she was very aroused and I miss that. And my, um, my, and I was like, well, you can't drive, drag me around because you're rear wheel drive and you're stronger than me. So yeah, I went to prong on her. I tried other stuff. It just didn't work. Um, and the prong helped drive a point across, but then my goal is always to try to back off to regular collar stuff if I can, right? It is, to me, it's like, yes, you're managing and that's okay. If that's what your dog can do and that's what you guys can accomplish and that's what keeps you safe, Godspeed, right? Like, that's okay. Like, and, um, and my people biter, Simon, who lived until he was almost 16, um, he was, I remember we went and I tried the harness, I tried buckle collar and everything, but he was so much of a jerk around people that he would, I mean, we got some um, titles on stuff, but then at a certain point when he had to go off leash on rally, I'm like, I'm not comfortable, <laughs> right? I can't, <laughs> my nerves are too much. And so, and that was okay. So then we did other stuff, right? And more home stuff because I knew from a, uh, morality point or ethical point, it became not worth it. Like mm -hmm. there are things that you're like, meh, right? And I didn't want to risk anyone or him or put him in certain situations. But what happened was I remember going to our vet appointment and he had a head collar on the halty. And the halty was like, you know, it was okay. It worked and helped. And I remember one lady, we were, we were in a little corner vestibule of the um, 
of the vet office. And some lady came in, we were doing tricks to try to keep his attention on me. But right, that's management, let's be real, right? Mm -hmm. He couldn't take in the world and not react to it. He just wasn't there. That just wasn't who he was. And that's okay. So I managed it. And so this lady's like, oh, he's so smart. Too bad he pulls mom around. And I'm like, no, actually he'll bite people. So I need to control his head. Right. And so people make judgments, period, mm -hmm. about where you're at and who you are. And dog trainers are the worst. Like, oh, that's a dog trainer. They should have more control and this and that. And I'm like, sometimes it's not about us. It's about what we're dealing with from a genetic standpoint. Right. Yeah. And sometimes you just want to go, would you like to give it a try? <laughs> yeah, right. Have fun. I know. And and that's the thing. Like, we need to stop that. We need to stop that right. in our society because sometimes it's just not like it's not us. It's it's stuff that we can't control. It's genetics. It's, you know, uh, learn behavior that we didn't realize until later. And now we have to go back and fix it. Right. Oh, right. I didn't realize. Right. So Past you know, like, mamas, right? You know? there's so much to it. Right. So. I, I, you know, Heidi, Heidi made a comment. Uh, Thanks. This is my Carl. We make progress at home, but in public, not so much. And so he Heidi, I'm glad that you, you kind of piped in the first time that I met Carl. Um, right. He, he's kind of sticks close to her and he's very obedient to her. Right. She's put a ton of work into him, but you know, he lays there in public and you're like, Hey buddy. And he's like, don't. Right. Like, right. Like I have no, he wouldn't, he's not going to bite you, but he's just like, I have no interest in you. Please just leave me alone. I, I really just, I, I'm not interested in making conversation with you. Right. That was the first time I met him. And, and I said to her like, Oh, I was a little, you know, a little nervous, a little issue. She goes, ah, oh, yeah. You know, he's got some issues, but we're working through it. And, and, you know, I see sometimes I don't peruse Facebook all that often, but when I do, it's like sometimes some people's things come up and um, Heidi's a big, obedience person right and i know that the club you're with is very supportive and and things so i'm not i'm not speaking about your club when i'm saying this but i feel sometimes too in, in the sports world everybody has a solution for you yep. don't let him do that you need to the dog needs to right and you can fill in whatever blank you want in don't that. let him so, win yeah right? don't let him win yeah. don't let him get away with that yeah, yeah. Right. Those types of things where if you ask the dog, they're like, listen, I'm not signing up for this. Anyway, so the dogs are Lisa, right? Like I go out because I have to, you know what I mean? If you asked, I would rather be at home in my pajamas, sitting on the couch, watching TV, yes. you know, <laughs> and, and sometimes, you know, and I, I make this remark too. I said, I have seen more bad behavior by humans towards dogs in the name of a $3 ribbon than I have anywhere else in the world in, in dogs, you know? And again, I'm not saying Heidi, but it's just, I, I wish people would step back and say, you know, this is my favorite sport, whatever it is, right? Does work, agility, obedience, therapy dogs. Oh my God. I'll tell that story in a minute. But, um, you know, I love to do this with my dogs and the dog is like, ah, I would rather leave it than take it. Well, and I'll tell you, like my and Carl, one, of the dogs, talking about you, but... one of my dogs, go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. One of my dogs, um, Fender, I remember. So Fender was Lucas's son and Lucas was, I'll do anything. I love everybody. I'm totally solid. He could do anything. Right. And I love that about him. So when the opportunity came where he came available for me, I was like, I'll totally take him right? Because it's Lucas's son, you know, he must be okay. Right? How about no? <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, like, and I kicked my own butt, because I'm like, well, my mom wanted me to marry a doctor and do all these things. And here I am, a dog trainer, right? Like far stretch from what you wanted for me. And I should know better, right? But at the same time, I was not thinking at that point, I was like, Oh, I would totally have another Lucas. So I get Fender and Fender is, he was nervous. He was aroused. He was not super confident around people, although it seemed like he presented at the time, but I misinterpreted it. And then I started doing agility with him. Right. And so when he wasn't living up to his father's 
standards. I did. I got very, um, I was like, what's going on? What's wrong? And I'd get upset. And I should have learned better with my Papillon because anytime I got upset, if something didn't go right, I'd be like, oh, and he'd run around and do circles. And I'm like, knowing that now I'm like, oh, well, you know, shit, that pardon my French. Um, that was me, right? That was my fault. And I was like, you know, projecting, so to speak. It was the same thing with Fender. And then finally one day I was like, He's not into it. This is my sport, but this is my sport, not his, right? And I needed to learn to respect that. And I think he came along for that reason. And it was hard. I'm not going to lie. It was hard for me to bond with him. But as he got older, you know, I started to accept who he was and stuff like that. And then um, what happened was he ended up having um, wrist issues, right? And I was like, huh. So we tried other sports, but he loved fly ball, but then he had a problem turning because he had so much pressure on his front to do the box turn, but he loved the chase game, right? Of the recall part of it. And so I stopped, I stopped my expectations. I was like, you get to be a dog to do what you want. Like those are things that we have to give up. And, and I gave it up at the time. I, initially, I'm not going to lie. I was resentful, but then I'm like, you know, I didn't turn out the way my parents wanted. So why is it any different? Right. And this is an animal, right? This is not the same. Like they don't have the same verbal part of it. So yeah, it, it's, it's tough. Like things you don't, you know, and that's why I think um, all of us try to like work to help people select the right dogs for them. Like, right. what are your goals? What's important to you? You know, and so we help, we try to understand that. So then, okay, this is what you want to look for. But the hardest part, I think, is that as much as I want to affect that area of people working with people and stuff, it is so much a, like, I see it, I want it and so forth. Yeah. Whether it be rescue, whether it be like breeding, it doesn't matter, you know? And it, I did it, it and I knew better. Yeah. I knew better. You know, we all do. And then we fall victim to it because we yep. are people like, right. Yep. But you know, and that's the other thing to me where the world is shifting, but it needs a, it needs a kick in the butt to shift a little faster, right. which is they didn't choose us. I chose you. Yep. Right. And if I chose you wrong, it's my job to, give you an enriched life. Right. right. And maybe that means, you know, like, like uh, Lisa said, she had to quit the sports. Right. And I, I'm betting that dog still got a lot of stuff at home oh. of special time. Right. It wasn't like we just, uh, but you're on the bench, buddy. I got br bring the next dog in. Right. You're not doing anything anymore. Cause I feel like that's so mentally detrimental to dogs right? Like they were a big part of your life and they got to share this and all of a sudden they don't live up to your potential. They don't do the sport good enough. They don't, you know, do those types of things. And it's like, you, you just go, oh, I'm moving on to the next dog. Right. And without meaning to, because if that's the love of your life is that sport, right. I think we owe it to these dogs to do something, whether it's, you know, I play a simple version of that game at home or I take them to class and I, I run them with no jumps. You know what I mean? Where they still get to have that experience, but I'm not hurting them or, or you know, all of those things. So it takes more time. It's like somebody was saying, you know, Hey, I'm, you know, I might have this puppy. I know you were interested in a while ago. I'm like, I cannot like, yes, I would love it, but I, I can't. I'm struggling right now after adopting Roscoe, having four dogs and working a full-time job and then running a dog training business at night, like trying to keep these dogs and give them each individual attention and give them each enrichment and things to keep their lives whole. I'm tired. And as much as I'd love a little, tiny little puppy and, and do the things with it, I'm like, I, I can't do that. I can't do that to my dogs. I can't do that to another dog. Cause somebody, the time's got to come from somewhere. Right. Yeah. It's, and it's true. Right. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. Like my addiction is puppies. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, give me your puppy. I'll play with it. I love puppies. I love them. They're so like teenagers, man, not so much, but <laughs> you know, the thing is, is like when you put in the, um, um, when you put in the, um, 
time as a puppy, right? And it's different. If you get a rescue, it's not the same because depending on when you get them, right, is critical. So like Pan is my cat, little cattle doggy. Um, she, I got her at six months and at six months she was just, you know, she was willing to learn and willing to work and she was very worky and stuff like that. But, you know, we struggle with certain things. She still has impulse control when I let her outside, she wants to run and grab everybody. And so we're working on that and it makes me insane. I'm like, okay. And you get to choose right in that point. I'm like, do I want to rehearse going and nipping at my Dutch Shepherd? No, I don't. Because then my Dutch Shepherd, if she nips at her, then we talk about alignment issues, chiropractic stuff, right? Does she have a nips or whatever on her? And my cattle dog, I don't want to rehearse that. So if I can't get her to grab a toy, like I did with my Dutchie, my Dutchie is better with um, impulse control stuff. I'm like, go get a toy. And she's like, okay. She grabs a ball in her mouth when she goes outside. The, the cattle dog has a harder time with it. And so, you know, those are things you get to pick, like, do I want to manage this? And it's okay. Like, it's okay to manage and prevent rehearsal of. And I think that's, we got to cut ourselves some slack on that. You know, it's like, it's okay. Like you're doing your best. And, you know, if I put her on a leash, she doesn't do the same thing. I can't get her to rehearse the behavior with limited um, stuff, right? Like I have to manage it. Otherwise, her desire is to keep continuing doing that. I know we have a couple of people chiming in. <laughs> Christy, did I say that? That sounds like something I would say. Uh, she says the best balance for all the you need to, why don't you let me work with him, was a judge who watched Gabe, her poodle, uh, noisily obsess over something far in the distance and said, oh, buddy, you've just got some really big feelings getting in the way of work today, don't you? And like, I love that so much because we don't always wake up on the right side of the bed and ready to work and ready to give 110%, but boy, we sure expect them to like, I don't know what's wrong with him today, man, geez, you know, and maybe he's having a bad day. Maybe he's right. having some big feelings. Maybe he, especially in adolescence, right? That happens far more than not. And that's the time where we're, I think the most short with our dogs anyway, but right. cut them some slack, man. Some just, if it's once in a while or one, yeah, I did. Took the pressure off of Christy. I didn't have to be mortified anymore. It was all okay. Right. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's, it's like just that one person to be like, it's fine. I did that too. Right. Like yeah. my dogs have done that. Don't even worry about it. It's a bad day. Leave it alone. You know, tomorrow's right. a new day. Right. So do you want to do Barbara's? Yeah. So she said, good point. Some of us do dog sports because we love dogs. Some because we love the sport and expect, expect the dog to adapt. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. Right. And so, but like, you know, I, you know, I go back to it, like, and I was the only girl out of eight boys. So I had, you know, high expectations and stuff from my parents and, you know, they, and we come right. I'm an eighties kid. So like we, we, uh, we're, um, that, you know, it was the, um, my family came from the whole, or I came from the whole, um, women should have, um, kids and blah, 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 whatever stuff like that. And right. And she wanted me to marry somebody who was wealthy. So I didn't have to like worry about my life and blah, 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 whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't matter. Cause it didn't work, you know, for you. So, <laughs> you know, whoops, there's some dirty laundry, but anyway, um, <laughs> my point is, is that like, I am not like, we are who we are. Like we need to be accepted for that and cut ourselves loose. Like, other people's opinion of who you are and who your dog should be in your care based upon who you are and what you do is none of your business. And it doesn't matter because they're not living your life. Right. I mean, we need to, we need to stop that whole idea because it's ridiculous. I mean, it, it makes no sense, you know? Yep. And, you know, speaking of the sports perspective, Lisa, I know you haven't really done competitive sports in a little while, but yeah. I remember when I first started nose work, you know, at being an instructor myself. And it was like, every time I would go to the trial, it's like, there was this, this weird pressure I put on myself to like, mm -hmm. don't, don't mess anything up. Cause people are watching you and, and people are taking you. And if you, if you don't do well at a trial, people are going to question if you're a good trainer. And it was like, 
at some point I'm like, this has nothing to do with anyone else, but me walking to the line with my dog. And when I let that go, man, we started having some success, right? Like I stopped worrying about it. We just could settle in. It's a, it's a moment with me and my dog that I truly got to enjoy. And, and I don't know, I just, I loved it. And, you know, to all the people out there, and I know a lot of you guys don't, but a lot of other people do in sports, right? Like, oh, they're a big instructor and look at, they came in last. Like we are human beings and we have bad days too. And, you know, I always say there, it's a, it's a magical unicorn for somebody who's a really great instructor and also a really great competitor a hundred percent of the time, right? Usually you can be a really good instructor and sometimes you struggle with a dog, you know, or you, you do really wonderful with your own dog and you're not so great at teaching other people, right? All that stuff exists. So, um, kind of how Lisa said, right? The stigma about it really, until you know that person personally and you know everything they're dealing with and what's going on with them and their dogs, it's like, you can make judgments, but you may not know even a quarter of that story. So I, I just, I really did stop worrying about everybody else and helped me a ton to settle in and have fun and do well. So I also think um, it also depends like how many dogs have you had, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you, the uh, and I'm not saying you should have tons or whatever the case may be, because I've had many and I have gone from pet dogs to therapy dogs to agility dogs. Um, I think my Papillon Max was the one who kind of drove me into agility and we loved it, but I put tons of pressure on them because I wanted to be good because it was my first agility dog and all that crazy stuff, right? And then I got Charlie who wanted to bite everybody. And then I got Simon who wanted to bite people. And, you know, you go through that, right? Because you think, oh, I could totally do this with other dogs. And, and I think until you've experienced multiple personalities and working with them, yeah. like it's a thing, right? to be able to do that. And I think as instructors, we're lucky to have that benefit of working mm -hmm. with multiple personalities, even if they're not our own dogs, they do give us more perspective on how to be better. Right. Yep. And I think that's, um, yeah, Lori, uh, yes, Lori, Suzanne did say, how many dogs old are you? She did. Yes. I remember that. <laughs> And I think it makes it, it does, it's, it's huge. Right. And I think it's how many dogs that you've personally owned versus how many dogs you've worked with, because, you know, there are dogs that I've worked with that I'm like, mm, you know, you just want him to be a pet, right. Cause he's not going to be the therapy dog you want. Right. It's just, he's not loving that. So yeah, it's, it, it is, um, it's a thing, right? It's, it's really important to understand that. And like I said, I'm like, so I went with these people who had um, recently, I did some privates and there was one private where I knew this dog, it was a bully breed and he came down and he recognized me, but he was like jumping and nipping and stuff like that at people. And I was like, Hey, you know, I'm like, what are your goals? Like, it's too much for him. Having a party and having him out and about for the entire party is not fair to him. He is not a party animal. The other one is welcome to deal with it, but he doesn't, it, it makes him too nervous. So cut him some slack and it's okay if he spends time in a crate. It's not like his whole life is time in a crate. It's just right. a short amount comparatively speaking, right? And and make crate time special time. Like go to the butcher and get a nice big femur bone and let him have the time of his life in there, right? While right. your party's going on, he's having a party of his own. So yeah, yeah. Let's see. Joe Joe has a nice comment. I love Rally Mushu, which is her little dachshund. Does not my compromise? He enjoys doing some training in small pieces. We do a sign or two and move on to what he loves: ball chasing and nose work. Perfect. I love that so much, Thank right? Because you're, you're not asking the world. You're like, Hey buddy, can, I really love this. Can you do this for me? And then I'm going to throw your ball for a little while. And the, most of the time when you approach it, it's like, it's like having a friend, right? You're like, I know that you hate going to the plant store with me, but like, <laughs> can you go like, can you just run in? I promise I'm only going to be 10 minutes or less. Do you mind? Right. And as long as it's not every Saturday before we go out to lunch. Okay. Every once in a while, I'm like, Ugh. Yep. I can do that for you. Cause I love you. And you're my friend. So I, I see that in the same way. Right. Right. Go it's ahead. relationship stuff, right? Yep. It's like anything. It's a give and take, uh, relationships. I think with dogs are different. Like we, 
we take more advantage, in my opinion, I think, I, and I know I do, I take for granted more the, the relationship I have with my dogs than I do with people. And I think, honestly, that's part of the reason why I do prefer dogs over people, because I can do that. But at the same time, I really try to put myself in check because I'm like, their needs are important as well. Right. But it's like any relationship, like there's a give and a take and helping them understand like or you understanding what you're giving to the relationship as well. So that's awesome, though, that Joe, that you do that with them. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Um, let's see, Lori, I love agility and my cash. That's her dog's name, not her money. My cash has been slow to pick it up. I did get another agility dog, but I'm still working with cash. He may get in the ring after my new BC does, but that's okay. Yep. It's still fun trying and cash is getting better. Um, still not there. And he's two and a half. Um, and so, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad Lori's watching this one because Lori's also, I don't, she puts a lot of pressure on herself, like to make a mistake. And it's like, man, you know, I looked at that puppy and he is such a nice dog. He's a collie, first of all. So they're a little different, but she loves that breed more power to you. Right. I think he's a wonderful, wonderful dog, but he's one of those kind of a little slow to mature males. (laughs) And He's when he's got it, he's really good at something, but then he's like, what? (laughs) No, and you kind of lose him. And it's frustrating sometimes with a dog like that because you're like, we've been working on it for a really long time. Why can you not just get this? You know, and this that's exactly the topic we're talking about tonight. You're like, what am I doing wrong? And sometimes it's nothing. You just keep on keeping on. And as long as the dog's having a good time and you're doing okay, right? And you can handle the slow and embracing, you know, difference, it's, it's going to make you a thousand times a better trainer for, for the next dog and the next dog. Because I will tell you what, in, in training anything, whether it's a sport or obedience or even behavior stuff, if I could say one of the number one skills that makes you better, it's patience, Mm -hmm. right? Because you cannot rush things when a dog isn't ready, whether it's fear, whether it's a sport, whether whatever, like you can't say, hurry up. I need you to go faster. It does not work. Right. No, absolutely agreed. I think it's, but that's no different than people, right? I think we have higher expectations of dogs. I think that's been our, um, I think that's been our societal expectations, right? I mean, we're Mm -hmm. just coming out of dogs being, um, commodity and not commodities, but like possessions. Right. Right. And so that is, it's a, it's a thing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thanks. Joe says, I love the humanity aspect of instructors. Some days just suck regardless of how great of a teacher you are. Yep. They do. (laughs) Um, Kathy, my first Boston was an amazing agility dog. Ruger is not, and he has grown doing nose work. Each dog is different. And, you know, I, I know Ruger, I don't know if you've met him, Lisa, he's like really kind of scared of the world, little Boston. Um, mm-hmm. And to go from like an amazing agility dog to a dog where it's like you still have to hold their hand crossing the street and they're, you know, we've been doing this for a really long time, but, you know, embracing that, how can I make the world a better place for you? Yep. And I, I really think Kathy's been doing that and Noseworks really helped with that. It, it's just, instead of being like, Ugh, why can't you, Right. you know, really enjoying that journey and, and enjoying making life so much better for that dog by going slow. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you have to, and that's the thing, like not every dog is the same, just like not every person but you just need to understand. And I think that's, that's our biggest obstacle is to understand who that individual is and work to that, who they are to help them accomplish things, whether it's our goal or not. I think that's the critical part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Barbara says kids and dogs, some need a longer plateau period when you've had a fast learner, it takes patience. Yep. It's, it's hard when you've had that amazing dog and then you get one and you're like, seriously, to not compare the two. Lisa just said it too, right? Well, Lucas and his son, 
right? And and so much so, even those of us that know better, it's I think it's it's more of a a hardship, like in my heart, because you're like, I wanna be better, but mm, you know, sometimes <laughs> and you're like, I suck as a human for thinking that. Right, but. right. You're right. I beat myself up constantly over all that. Yep. Right. And like, relax, it's just you're not you're not perfect, so let it go. Right. <laughs> And that, that's like, bam. And you guys know I'm kidding when I say things like this, because I would never, but I'm like, I have never wanted to punch a dog more than I have him. He just, he frustrates me to no end. I'm like, why can you just not pull it together? But I will tell you what, the day that I lose that dog, decades of dogs after him, he has taught me so many valuable skills on what it's like to live life with a ridiculous, overly aroused dog. Right. Right. And to help other people, because those are the dogs that I'm not going to lie. A lot of people resort to e-collar training yep. um, or really harsh methods because nothing else is working. And that, that stuff doesn't work either. You either no. break their spirit. Right. And they just kind of become a lump or, you know, they're miserable. Right. So. And the problem is, I think, like sometimes with those types of dogs, they you're always managing. So you're always going to resort to uh a management tool, regardless of what that is, right? Yep. To be able to communicate with that dog, which I personally think has has some very down, big downfalls to relationships, right? Yep. And that dog is never going to really fully trust you and always be suspicious. It's yep. just, but that's a whole nother story. So, yep. And and you guys know, like you guys know that how positive we are and how much patience and time that we take. I'm not going to lie. There are moments where I'm like, it takes everything I have to not yank that leash back on him. When he is dragging me sometimes and I've had a bad day or my knee hurts or whatever to not just give him a good one back. It's, it's only fair, right? I've asked you a hundred times and you're not listening. Just knock it off. I, I, I will sometimes give a little tug back, right? But I'm not going to pull him off his feet because it's right. just, it's like getting super mad at like an Asperger's kid, right? Right. Like, pull it together, you know? And it, I could, if I would, and I know he would, he tries so hard sometimes. And when he is having bad moments, it seems like he's just giving you the big fuzzy middle toe, right? Like, I don't care about you. Uh, he does. He loves me he's trying as hard as he can most of the time. <laughs> when I think that's, of it. and I think that's what, like, that's what keeps a pump keeps us humble. Right. Right. Because we have so much more to learn. There's so yeah. much out there to learn and to know and to, um, be better about. It's like, and I think that, you know, having those dogs that make us a little more like frustrated about stuff, it's like, how do I get around this? How do I get better at this? And I think that's why we stay here. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, we train as much as we can, but Again, there's nothing wrong with managing things that you cannot, um, you can't change, right? It is what it is. So, yep. And I think that's why we wanted to talk about this tonight, which is, you know, and again, this is not for the people who took a six week obedience class and they're like, no, oh, no, you just can't seem to get it, right? These are the people who have tried every way from Sunday and you struggle and you struggle and you struggle and, you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Sometimes the answer is nothing. It's genetics. It's arousal. It's fear. It's whatever. And the only thing you can do is, you know, offer support and continue to manage the situation. Right. Cause I'm not just going to, I'm not going to let him drag me down the street. That's, that's right. not a good idea either, but you know, so what can we do to, to kind of smooth over the, the frustrations of, not having that good communication, right? Of, of, I hear you, I'm trying. And I think they are a lot of times, but because they can't seem to get it, we feel like something's wrong with us. So just giving you that, that hall pass, right? It's, it's not always something that you're doing wrong. Sometimes it just is what it is. As hard as you try it, this is who the dog is. Yeah. Give yourself grace. Nobody yeah. is, nobody gets it all right all the time every yep. single time nobody i know of no. so <laughs> we'd be millionaires if we could do that right right there's a button if you open them <laughs> <laughs> no i wish it were that easy but 
Right. You train any dog with a guarantee, they'll come back perfect. So. Right. I've heard those, by the oh, way, yeah. which me are too. fascinating to me. <laughs> so interesting. But anyway. Yeah, Mary, you're right. Small successes with um, those difficult dogs, right? It, it's those moments of like, we just made it across the parking lot and got in the car. And people are like, so? You're like, you don't understand. <laughs> so yeah, don't don't let anybody tell you that your small success isn't worthy of a party. Because absolutely, 100%. Sometimes those tiny things are enormous skyscrapers to leaps and bounds over, right? So. Yeah. And, and and those of you guys are watching this, like, let's be serious. You guys aren't the average pet owner. Let's right. be 100% serious. If you're looking at this and watching this mm -hmm. stuff, you are not the average pet owner, right? The average pet owner, like they want to do a six week class and expect everything's okay. Or maybe not. Maybe they just want to try to get through because they want to. Who knows, right? And it's irrelevant at that point. But for you guys, you all have are at a different level just based upon your commitment to your dog, period. So that's huge in and of yeah. itself. So thank you for watching for sure. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for sticking with us with our crazy topics sometimes. But this is this these are the things that we're trying to get out into the world, right? Is build the relationship, try and be there for your dog, and they'll give back to you. And we all have bumps along the way. <laughs> Tomorrow's a new day. This too shall pass. So, yep, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching us. Um, I don't know if we have one next week, but stay tuned to the oh, Facebook pages, pages for uh, the next topic. Thanks, everyone. Right. Have a good night. Have a good week. Uh -huh. Bye.